No, no, you're right. Obviously, it is it is another loss and it's disappointing, but the message doesn't change. We keep going, we keep working hard, and we hope we can get out of this situation. Um, the, the boys gave everything out there today. We, we were just unlucky. We keep going. Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name is Clayton. This is Clayton FM and this is Saving Schalke. It's episode number four today. And as you would have just seen in the intro there, uh, I have played another game and we lost it. And it's not great, but before we do get into all of that, which is we're going to really get into detail today. We're going to look in things. We're going to see what we can fix. But before we do that, just a quick reminder, today is a Saturday upload, meaning if you hit 200 likes on today's episode, you will get another Wednesday upload, just like last week. The midweek bonus episode will be uploaded if you hit 200 likes. So far, every episode has hit 200 likes. Fantastic support. Thank you so much for that. Really loving reading all of your comments and everything too. So please do keep going with all of that. It really does help me out. You know, hit subscribe to the channel too. That's also great. We are pushing towards 2,500 subscribers. That's very cool. Let's see if we can hit that. So yeah, let's have a look at that game that I lost. So this is the game that I'm referring to here. You see that we played Augsburg at home and we lost 3-1. This is the type of game that we really need to be winning if we're going to get ourselves out of this situation. And this is the type of game where we play terribly and lose. It's a recurring thing. It is very much a recurring thing. 3-1 was the final score. And I mean, I just want to show you the first goal because this first goal here sums up why we're in this situation we look we look pretty good in some games like that Dortmund game last episode we looked good we scored goals against a really good Dortmund team but then we do things defensively like this where you see it just bounces off all of our players around in the box and we concede a goal suddenly we're 1-0 down and struggling Niederlechner getting the first goal for the mayor look and I mean we'll watch all the rest of the goals here Niederlechner got the second goal as well lovely through ball Ralph Farman is in a different postcode there as he puts it in the bottom corner that was 2-0 second half we decided to wake up a little bit Mark Oot with the little through ball to Huang Hee Chan here nice finish he's been a bright spark to be fair He's actually been quite impressive. He's been a good signing. Um, the, the rest of the players, less good. Um, and then it was 3-1 about 10 minutes later. Again, Ralph Farman, he's off down the shops and uh, Vargas made it 3-1. It's the, That performance sums us up, honestly. It really does. Gary Megson couldn't do anything about it. He had no answers. I did actually start Matthew Hopp, as you see here. He got a 6.4 and I took him off just after half time. He was pretty poor. I'm going to give him another chance though. And I wanted to show you this result because today's episode is going to be about trying to avoid this. We're going to go full tactical on this now. I'm going to look at a different shape completely and I'm going to see if we can get the best out of these players because do you know what? The 4-4-2 is solid and we've got lots of draws but we're not winning enough games and we really do need to win some games. So to have a look at the league table then, you can see that we are very much still bottom of the league. There you, you see we've got 17 points and a minus 32 goal difference, which is just about the worst in the league. One worse than Union Berlin. Union Berlin just lost 4-1 to Bayern Munich, by the way. Bayern Munich are now the team at the top, which is not always been the case, actually. Borussia Mönchengladbach have had a really good season. But just to compare, Bayern Munich's goal difference is 46, ours is minus 32. You will notice that Armenia Bielefeld have now got themselves up to 27 points. That gives them a 10 point cushion over us. Not that they're worried about us. I don't think they're even thinking about us right now. But 10 points, I feel like that might now be too much. We might now have to forget about getting out of the relegation zone completely. We've only got six games to go. 10 points is probably a little bit too far. We might now have to be hoping that we're going to get ourselves into this relegation playoff place, which is where Stuttgart currently are. Stuttgart, by the way, just got themselves a point. They drew 4-4 with Borussia Dortmund. I feel like that's very similar to what we did. We drew 3-3 with them. There really isn't much room for error down there now, is it? Other teams are getting points. We are still struggling down on 17. A five-point gap to the team that is in the relegation playoff game. We need to win some games. We really, really do need to win some games. So this tactical session we're about to have really needs to work. By the way, when we do play the games today, they're against Freiburg. They're 10th in the league. That's away from home. We're also away from home to Armenia Bielefeld. They're the team that are just a couple of places above us, 10 points ahead of us. Maybe if we beat them, then we can maybe think about 
pulling them back in. I'm not sure it's going to actually be possible, but we do need to try and beat them. And then finally, the final game for today's episode is going to be against Hertha Berlin, a team I know very well. They are currently 13th. They're actually not doing great this year. That's at home. That will leave us with three games to play in our next episode. I'm hoping that with a couple of wins here and there, we can at least get ourselves to this relegation playoff game. Otherwise, relegation is, is going to happen, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so let's have a little think about this tactically then. What can we change? How are we going to approach the rest of this season? Thank you, by the way, for all of your comments. Very, very helpful. I especially like this one that just said, sort out your defence. Uh, thank you. Thank you. W will do. Very helpful. And then on the complete other end of the spectrum, I had this comment who, um, I mean, that's detailed. That That's detailed. I didn't really know what to say to this. So I just said, do you want to be the manager? Um, do you? Obviously, we've been playing this 4-4-2 system, which is really run of the mill. It's really solid, which is exactly what the 4-4-2 is designed to be, right? But at this stage now, it's do or die. It's win or bust. So I'm going to completely throw it out the window. We're going to try and do something that is going to attack teams and hopefully get some wins. I'm going to change the shape completely to this. What do you reckon? I love it. I don't know if it's going to work, but I love it. It is this. We've got two ball playing defenders with an anchor man in front of them. Stambouli is going to be that guy. Orijuela and Kalasanac are going to be our wing backs attacking. Let's get forward. They are going to provide the width because we've got two central midfielders. We're going to have a Carrillero in Mascaral and Nabil Bentaleb. Now you're probably thinking, what is he doing in the team? He's been ostracized. He's been told not to play. He's been in the under 23s. He's been taken out of the team, but no, I have managed to persuade Nabil Bentaleb to come and rejoin training. He's back in the first team squad. How did I manage to convince him? I hear you ask. I sent him loads of Snapchats um, and, and he's back. So Man management. He will take the place in the midfield alongside Mascaral. I'm going to move Amin Harit into this position here, the Trekle Tista, and hope that he can make things happen. I feel like he wasn't really influencing the team enough in the wide position. So I've brought him into the centre and hoping he's going to do something. Huang Hee Chan will continue up front. He has actually picked up a little bit of an injury for seven days. He should be back for the next game, I hope so. Matthew Hopp is going to continue up front alongside Huang Hee Chan. I don't know if he's going to be good enough, but this is the gamble that I'm going to take. Matthew Hopp, please score us the goals to save us from relegation. This is the new tactic. I'm going to go and play three games now and pray that we get some wins. Please. Oh, actually, before I do go to those games, I just got a text from Gary Megson. He says, play for set pieces. So let's do that. He also says, near post corners and long throws. So near post corners... Yep, tick. We're going to aim our corners towards six foot five Salif Sane, by the way, who's got 19 jumping reach. So I feel like that's effective. And long throws, he says. Let's make sure long throws are set as well. Right, long throws are set. Let's also aim those towards Salif Sane. Good idea, Gary. So look at this. It was so, so very nearly... Three wins from three. We were just beaten in the last game against Hertha Berlin, but so close to getting three wins. We beat Freiburg 3-1. We beat Armenia Bielefeld 3-0. We smashed it. This new tactic, it's working. And with three games to go, we have given ourselves a chance. We did lose the game against Hertha Berlin, but we actually created loads in this game and we're a little bit unlucky to lose it in the end. It was a calamitous first half an hour actually in that game. So we started off with this game against Freiburg. We actually went 1-0 down in this game. It was Hola with a big header at the back post, but we equalised on the stroke of halftime. Long throw. Remember Gary Megson said to do the long throws. It was Nastasic on the end of it. Matthew Hopp. Just after halftime, involved, in fact, getting the assist. Horrible defending, but Huang Hee Chan finishing it. Matthew Hopp involved in the build-up to make it 2-1. And then finally, right at the end, Pasen 
Paciencia, who I say his name a different way every single episode, I feel. He passed the ball across. Huang Hee Chan scored again. He is a goal scoring machine for us to make it 3 1. The tactic worked. Really great performance from the team there. And I was thinking, here we go. This is going to be good. We've won our first game. Into the next game we went. We played Armenia Bielefeld. Remember, they were the team that were 10 points clear of us, just above the relegation zone. We beat them 3 0. We scored. Just past the 13 minute mark, it was Huang Hee Chan again. Of course it was, smashing home. Lovely through ball from Nabil Bentaleb back in the team. And then into the second half, we went Mascara with the ball over the top. Amin Harit playing this slightly further forward role now on the end of it, putting it in. 2-0 and then right before the end set piece Chris Richards on the end of it lovely header 3-0 easy as that we completely dominated that by the way I think we had something like a 2.58 xg compared to Bielefeld's which was like 0.51 completely dominant brilliant excellent excellent win that took us into this Hertha game where we did end up losing it 3-2 and that was really because of the fact that after three minutes we were 1-0 down it was Piontek with the header at the near post not great defending from the set piece 26 minutes on the clock we were 2-0 down it was Dilro son with the finish Farman got a hand to it couldn't keep it out 2-0 down it's not a good start really and then just after half time we were 3-0 down it was Mateus Cunha with the goal and Really, we, I don't know if we deserve to be 3-0 down at this stage. Probably not. We did make a fight of it in the second half, though. It's Benito Roman with a lovely finish past the goalkeeper to make it 3-1. And then towards the end, we did make it 3-2. 12 minutes to go. It was shot from the penalty spot. Nice and calm. 3-2. We couldn't find the equaliser, though. And we did end up losing the game. But... You know, three games played there, though, and eight goals scored. Those are good signs. With three games to go, those are good signs. Now, there's also news when we have a look at the table. We are no longer bottom. Can you imagine? We are no longer the bottom team. However, there is kind of some bad news too. Stuttgart have decided that they're, they're not interested in getting relegated. They've managed to pull themselves out of the relegation zone. They are now 15th. They have just beaten Leipzig away from home somehow. And Stuttgart now find themselves on 28 points. Just like Bielefeld. Now, we're no longer bottom, but we are still five points off getting out of this relegation zone. Do you remember that was 10 points though? We've now made it five. Union Berlin are now bottom on 21. I still don't know if this is possible. With three games to go, I think we need two wins out of three, at the very least. It's going to be nip and tuck all the way. Our games that we are yet to play are against Hoffenheim away, Frankfurt at home, and then Cologne away from home to finish off the season. I don't think any of those games are easy. But next episode, we're going to play these three games and we're going to find out if we're going to avoid relegation or... Will we go to another episode and will it be a relegation playoff match? That would be dramatic, wouldn't it? But I believe, you know, I believe we can do this. Hello? Yeah. Hi, love. Hiya. Yeah. You, you saw it on the news. Yeah, I know. We won a couple of games. It's, um, yeah, no, I wasn't expecting it either. Yeah, I just, just thinking, we cancel the holiday. Yeah, no, I, I might be here a little bit longer. I know, I, I, I know, like I said, was not expecting it either. I might actually keep the job. <laughs> no, I, I was, I wasn't expecting it either. Um, but yeah, no, cancel the holiday because uh, I've still got work to do here. Yeah, all right then. Yeah, now have a lovely evening. Talk to you soon. Yeah, bye. Say, say hi to Lenny. Say, bye, 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 bye.